Hello and welcome to the second video in this Introduction to Neural Network series. So we're going to start building our game in this video. Uh, on the screen you can see a schematic of what we're going to do. Uh, we've got uh, the blue background, which is actually an image. It'll be a PNG. And our display will be 960 pixels wide by 540 high. In Pygame, the way things work is on a coordinate basis where X is horizontal, Y is vertical. And 0 by 0 is top left. And then bottom right is then 960 by 540. We'll define in the actual code itself um, a variable display width, which will be set to 960, and a variable display height, so display underscore h, which will be set to 540. And what I'd like to do is set us up so that the game is running at 30 frames a second and we can display the frames per second and the elapsed game time. The way that's been structured is I have a folder called github with another one called ch2 inside. I'll just go back to github. Uh, the code we're I'm going to write for this video will be inside ch2. Yours doesn't have to be. I need to separate them all out for the videos. The images we use you'll find on github. I've got them already here. bg, pipe and robin png all pngs uh, i've got those sort of one level above the code i'm going to write so i can reuse them in each of the videos rather than copy and pasting them into each of the individual folders you don't need to do that but in the folder ch2 i've got two files already created one called defs.py one called main Py. I've also got a command prompt open and already inside the ch2 directory if I type dir you can see that we've got defs.py and main.py and to actually edit the python code then uh, I'm using sublime text and on the left hand side you can see the exactly the same as just now in explorer the order of the folders and everything with the defs.py and main.py inside the ch2 so inside defs.py I've made a little bit of a start for brevity to try and keep things ticking along I've got uh, six variables here defined so the display width the height 96540, the target frames per second 30, uh, the font size for our labels, the color which is just a tuple with RGB, so it's a sort of off white color, and then the actual location of our background image which we want to use, the blue PNG. Um, so that we can use it in the game. Now remember the code here is inside CH2 whereas the images are one level above so here this is just a relative path if you don't know them the double dot is saying go up one level and then look for the file bg.png so we can find it. And what I'd like to do now then is set things up. So inside main.py I'm importing Pygame on line 1 and then line 2, importing everything from def so we can use it. And if you're very new to Python, then line 7 might be a little bit uh, confusing. Essentially, it's saying if we have run this file main.py, then execute the stuff or the code inside this if. And in our case, it will be execute run game. Now, this won't work because run game doesn't exist yet. And that's what we're going to going to define now. So here I'm defining my run game function, which will be executed when the game actually runs. The first thing I need to do is initialize Pygame. And for that, I'm going to do two things. And I'm going to do a little bit of paste in this video just to keep things ticking along. So we've got a bit of code and I don't want to spend too much time going through it. Um, here we initialize uh, Pygame with Pygame init. And here, crucially, we call set mode on pygame.display. You can find the documentation, all the things you can do with this. But in our case, we give a tuple saying what the width and the height of the display should be. And we maintain a reference to that. That's important because this variable game display will be using to draw everything on the actual Pygame display. The other thing I'd like to do is set the title of our window and I'll call it Learn to Fly. And now we're ready actually to go. Now the way the game works is we need to draw things on it and we need to update every X frames per second. In our case we want 30 frames a second. And to do that we're going to have a loop and we need to loop whilst something is happening. We're basically going to say whilst we are running. So I'm going to set up a new variable called running and set that equal to true. And this essentially at the moment is an infinite loop. We're saying whilst we're running, then keep looping. So inside here, we're going to do a couple of things. The first thing I want to draw our image on the screen. Now I could load the image inside the loop here, but I don't really want to do that because uh, that'll use up a lot of uh, unnecessary processing power to load the image from the file each time we have a frame. We'll actually do this before the while loop and then have a variable store the loaded image inside. So here I'm creating a new variable bgimg and using the uh, pygame.image.load function there to load our bg file name image. You remember that's defined in defs.py and that will load our bg.png and store it inside this variable and we can use that then to draw the image 
each frame. To draw the image, we're going to do something called blit. So our display has a function called blit, and we can use this to draw lots of things, as you'll see later in this series. Here we can use it to draw our image, and what we need to specify is a tuple of where in X and Y we want our image to be drawn. And in our case, we want our image to be drawn at zero by zero. Why is that? As well, whenever we have an image, the point we specify uh, for it to be drawn will be the top left hand point of the image. So if I'd specified the center of the screen, then we'd actually have the image uh, offset towards the center like this, which isn't what we want. We want it drawn at zero by zero. So we specify then the position of the image to be zero by zero. And the image coincidentally is exactly the width and height of the display that we specified. So each time this loop executes, we will draw this image onto the screen. At the moment, there doesn't seem to be really much point in doing that every frame. We should just do it once and leave it there. But it'll have the effect in, in future videos of clearing the screen for us before we draw everything that's been updated, positions and things in their new positions, like the birds and the pipes and things. What we also need to be able to do is we want to update our display with anything new that's been drawn on there you'll call here. And now we have a running game. I'm not going to run it quite yet, but now this will loop infinitely because running will remain true. And whilst it loops, we'll draw the image on the screen and show us then the blue screen. I'd like a way of quitting. And I'm going to put this in between this drawing here. Uh, each time this loop runs or a frame runs, uh, Pygame gives us access to events that have happened since the last frame. And we can loop through those events. And again, there's lots of documentation online about this, but there are lots of types of events, key presses, mouse movements, quit, and all sorts of things like that. And I want to look for a quit, so the cross pressed or something like that, which will set running to false, which will exit the while loop. If the type is a key down, so somebody's pressed a key or the user has pressed a key, then also running can be set to false and will break out of this while loop. Last but not least, before actually running this, we want to limit the frames per second to 30 frames per second and keep track also of how much game time has elapsed. There's a really handy feature in Pygame called a clock and you can get yourself a clock by doing this. I've made a clock variable and asked Pygame for a clock and you can tell that clock to tick uh, so many times per second. So inside running here, what we're going to do is the first thing is say that we want to tick every uh, FPS that we set in desktop age, so 30 times a second. And when it ticks, I want to store the amount of time that's elapsed since the last tick. And I'm going to call this DT. And while we're at it, we might as well set up a game time variable also to be zero so we can keep track of the total elapsed game time. So we can use our clock then to tick, to go through this loop at our frames per second. So and this will have the effect at running this loop at 30 times a second. Each time we'll get the time delta in milliseconds from the previous frame and we can increment our game time accordingly. And now we're running at 30 frames per second. A key down event should allow us to quit. To quit. We've set the title learn to fly. We can quickly run this in the console and have a look what we have. So python main.py, execute this and you can see we have our window learn to fly and there's nothing on the screen apart from our blue background image at the moment but if I press a key then it quits and everything seems to be working. So the last thing then is to put these labels onto the screen and what we do here is we actually render our font and we blit it much in the same way that we did with the background image and tell what position we want it to blit. But because we're going to have four labels, I want to split this up into a couple of functions to make things a little bit easier to understand and limit the amount of copying and pasting of code that we want to do. The first thing, however, will be to make a font, which I'm going to do uh, inside here, just under the background image and call it label font. This is using uh, Pygame again, allows us from a system font, this monospace you have to give the name as a string and the font size we've already declared in desktop high that'll make us a font that we can use to draw our text with the uh, size and now we're going to define two two functions one of them is just going to be called update label which literally renders uh, a font for us text on the screen and then draws it with blit on the screen i'm going to paste that whole thing in so we take in some data a title the font x and y and the game display reference as well so we can actually draw it on the game and here we render our font with the string that we want to display which in this case is our title so maybe fps and then the data so the actual number the one here is saying we want to do anti-aliasing so it looks a little bit smoother and here we've got the color we want our font to be which has been defined in 
defs.py. And when we've rendered that font, we can then uh, draw that at the X and Y position that came in onto the game display. And then we return our Y and you'll see now why we return our Y. I'm going to make a new function called update data labels. And this takes in then all the data that we want to display. So we take in the game display and the delta time data, the game time data and the font that we want to use. We'll start off at an X and a Y of 10 and we'll have a gap between our labels of uh, 20. And all we do then is remember we're returning the Y. So we say the new Y position that starts out at 10 is equal to our update label. Here we're sending in our delta time, which is milliseconds. So 1000 divided by delta time rounded to two decimal places to get our frames per second. So we'll have in the string FPS space and then this result here. We send in our font, which we want to use as well. Our X position at the start is 10. Our Y position is 10, but plus the gap. So Y actually will be 30 here and we'll return then 30 from this function and the game display. So now the Y position that's sent into this one here is 30 rather than 10. And again, we send in Y plus gap. So the Y returned will be 50 or the Y here used will be 50 and the Y returned will be 50. Now it just allows us to add line by line the labels that we want to have updated without manually coding in the, the Y position down the screen. So now we have our update data labels function. The only thing to do is call it inside our running loop and then we'll update the labels with our frames per second and our elapsed game time information. So I'm going to take our update data labels and we'll do this just before we update the, update the game. So we want to send in the game display, our delta time, our game time, and our font that we've created for our label as well. And all being well, with no spelling errors or anything dramatic like that, we should now see these labels up and running on the screen. And indeed we do. So almost uh, 30 frames a second, and you can see the game time incrementing nicely as well. So I just press a key to quit. So that's it then for this video. Hopefully you've uh, got the idea of how things uh, fit together with Pygame. We've gone very, very quickly there. Um, basically, it's all bells based around this loop here. And each time we loop, we want to update the game display with the current information. So draw all of our images again, our labels again, and things like that, which is a fairly standard thing for, for most uh, game frameworks. Pygame has a couple of little quirks, which took a while to get used to, but generally it's really, really uh, simple to understand. Okay, so any press questions, problems or anything, please uh, feel free to uh, comment in the comment section. Uh, the code will be in the description. It's on GitHub. Uh, thanks very much for watching, taking the time and see you in the next one.